What's up y'all, I'm out here on the range as you can see on what's supposed to turn out to be a fantastic day out here. Temperature in the high 70s, sun is out, but I don't even really have to put my shade up with this kind of temperature. I got out here early enough that by the time the sun gets the temperature hot enough out here, I'll be done. I've gotten one good nine mil test done so far, and this one right here is actually gonna be a revisit to some 380 ACP. So of course the jelly contraption's ready to go out here with a couple of chronos and two blocks of gel. Now again, I've done one test, just a nine mil test, really, really good results. So I'll leave some links above if y'all want to check that one out. As you can see though, plenty of room to get this 380 test done. Of course, I'm using a heavy clothing barrier like always with a layer of denim, fleece, and two layers of cotton t-shirt. And like I mentioned, this is actually a redo of a couple of rounds that I tested quite a while back. I really didn't realize I had only tested these very, very limited until I got looking. The only time that I think I've tested either one of these rounds was through my Smith & Wesson EZ against uh, some 30 Super Carry out of the same length. And I don't think I was even using the cloth barrier. I might have been, but either way, it's been a very long time and out of a longer barrel. But as you can see, I'm talking about a couple of federal rounds. So we got the punch and the HST here. The punch is 85 grain, the HST 99 grain. As far as ballistics on the box, they're really, really close. The punch with the lighter projectile is saying 1,000 and then the little bit heavier projectile HST is saying 935 and that's giving them within three foot pounds of energy of each other so nearly identical on the energy. Now those velocities are from a 3.75 inch test barrel which is longer than what we're using here. We're using an inch shorter barrel with the bodyguard 2.0. But here's a look at your cartridges here. Both of them nickel plated. Different projectile obviously. HST on the right with the punch there on the left. You can see HST a much more rounded kind of profile with the punch being much more tapered there at the cavity. As far as the primer end, they both look the same, same case, and they both look to be sealed with some blue sealer. And as I mentioned for the tester here, we're using the new Smith & Wesson Bodyguard 2.0 with a 2.75 inch barrel. So this ought to be a good one. Part of the reason for doing this was just I wanted to feed a couple more different rounds through the Bodyguard just to make sure there was no issues. I feel like both of these are going to perform pretty well, probably just a little bit short on the penetration for what I want but let's get it all set up and see what happens. All right, let's see what we're working with from this shorty here, y'all. I'm gonna do a five round average from both of them, starting with this punch first. Remember, this is saying 1,000 FPS from an inch longer barrel hill, so we're probably not gonna see that. If y'all aren't familiar with this lab radar, you will get multiple velocity readings. The large number is right here at the muzzle, and then you've got five across the bottom. The first one I've got set for three yards, which is roughly where your gel is here at 10 feet, and then I've got them set for 10, 15, 25, and 50. So let's see how close we get to the thousand from this little guy. Eight ninety four, nine twenty, eight ninety six, eight seventy two. And 891, so definitely not the 1,000. Let's check out the average. All right, so our five round average there from that federal punch was 895 feet per second, extreme spread of 48 with a standard deviation of 7.2. So 895, just a little bit shy of 900. We did see, well, we saw a 920. Uh, you know, any other time I would say I'm pretty worried right there. If this was an XTP or something like that, I would definitely be worried. Being that this is a punch, we've probably still got some pretty good chances of that stuff doing well. But then again, that's just guessing. I'm not sure it could totally fail at those velocities. But that don't really matter just yet because we got another round to check out. Let me get it reset and see what the HSTs do. All right, let's see what this HST does. Now, this member was saying 935 on the box. We were like, what, right at 100 off on that punch. So hopefully we're not 100 off on this. We might be though. Let's see what happens. 938. 924. 919. 935. And 928, so glad to see that. We fell a little short on some of them, but I think we exceeded it on one or two. Let's check out the average. 
All right, y'all, looks like this HST is actually already showing you a glimpse of why it's considered the more premium round. So five round average that time was 929. We had a five uh, extreme spread of 19 with a standard deviation of 7.8. So not only was it more consistent, but it was closer to that advertised velocity, even out of the inch shorter barrel. So just simply based on the numbers here and the math, this is already a win for the HST, but uh, 929 right here, and if you do remember out that punch it was 895 so you're talking about 34 feet per second difference as far as the velocity difference 34 feet per second generally i wouldn't consider a whole lot but when you're talking about these small velocities i mean that could be significant if that projectile is right on the edge again though being a punch i don't think it is that close to being marginal as far as performance i think we're still going to get some decent performance out of it the hst i think is going to do a great job as far as expansion the penetration is what I'm really curious about, but let's get everything set up. Y'all know what time it is. All right, y'all, it's which federal pocket round should you carry around town? Jelly time. We'll put one of each into the gel, starting with this punch first. This one I'm a little bit iffy on. I think being a punch though, and designed for 3.75, even though this is an inch shorter, I think it might be all right. All right, that should have been a good one. Let's go see what happened. All right, y'all, looks like I was worried for nothing because that punch is looking very, very nice down there. This HST's got its work cut out for it because that stuff looks good. But I think the HST can do it. Let's see what happens. All right, I think I went over beside. That might be a little tricky to see. Let's go check them out. All right, y'all, second test of the day and the second case of getting some really, really nice performance from both rounds. So this one here, it's a little bit tricky. I've got you kind of at an angle so you can see that HST behind that uh, punch right here. But from above, you'll be able to see a nice, really nice clear picture. Bottom line is both of these things did a fantastic job. And as far as disruption in the gel, they look very, very similar. But the first one is on top right here from this view. That's the punch. As you can see, it comes in here, immediate expansion, no doubt about it. Very nice disruption, really nice spiral and disruption all the way through here curves down a little bit now this is on the bottom as you get down here because it curved down on the top down this end bottom down here that's the punch you can see very very nice penetration the forward momentum is almost touching the end of this 16 inch block it's probably a quarter of an inch from the end of that block and really really nice expansion to go along with it and then behind that one is the HST. You can see it up under in this view right here. So again, very nice disruption. It looks nearly identical. You really can't hardly tell the difference between them. Keeps on trucking once again, nice spiraling action, disruption all the way through. Now it's behind this one and this one curves up. So on the top down here and bottom down here as far as HST. But once again, this one actually has a little bit less penetration. This one's probably right at about 15. And the expansion on this one looks very, very irregular but you still have plenty from what I can tell. And then here's your close-up staying at the front view first. Again, right at this end on the top is the punch, top front, and then the bottom back there, that's gonna be the HST. So following both through, you can see really nice disruption. You can't really tell much difference. Right there, they uh, go up and down on the bottom right there that's the punch and then on the top that's the hst and then looking at it from above you can see them more separated here on this view the top is going to be your hst and the bottom's the punch as you can see very very nice from both of them all the way through here right there is your punch and then right there is your hst all right, let's check out the projectiles, y'all. As you can see, both of them did expand and they actually expanded pretty much the same amount. If you look here, how the leads pulled out. Now, the HST, though, as you can see, two of the pedals did not open up at all. It got a little sideways. It was actually sitting backwards like this when I pulled it out. So somewhere along the lines, it tumbled. It could have been at the end, could have been somewhere in the middle. But either way, I don't think this is an issue at all because you know you're probably not gonna get this 
pretty perfect expansion like we see a lot of times anyway, depending on what this projectile runs into. So no doubt this punch got way more even expansion, but I think both of them are more than adequate as far as 380. But let's get some measurements on them and see what that looks like. As far as weight, the HST started at 99 and it actually is at 100.1. Let's make sure that's right. Yeah, 100.1 on the HST, so definitely no loss on that one. The punch started at 85, and it's at 84.8, so you may have lost a little crumb of lead here and there, but for the most part, both of these held all their material. And then as far as the expansion size, the punch should take it right here just because of that irregular HST. You got 444 and 458. So actually some nice expansion right there for a 380. And then this HST, you're gonna have definitely some irregular measurements. The short way, you got 428. And then on this biggest direction, you got 592. So definitely some expansion there, just a little bit uneven. But again, I think that's fine, more than fine for both of these. And there you go, y'all, the Federal HST versus Punch in 380 ACP. Really nice performance from both of these. I'm actually kind of surprised these both did better than what I thought. I figured they would expand just because of what they are, very, very nicely designed projectiles, but I thought the penetration would suffer, and in this case, it absolutely did not. I think both of these did a really, really nice job, so if I had these in 380, I would absolutely run them, but y'all Y'all know how I am about 380 and that's why I say this expansion, uneven expansion really doesn't matter to me because as far as that goes, I personally would run an FMJ in 380 if I needed to and not worry. But as far as expanding defensive rounds, these right here both did a nice job through this bodyguard. All right, y'all, that does it for the second test of the day and some more really good performance. Again, I'm a little bit surprised on this one as far as the penetration anyway. I think this is absolutely perfect right here. I don't remember them actually doing that well through the EZ. I think they were just kind of so-so as far as performance, but this right here, I think is really nice. But now again, even though this stuff did really well, I personally wouldn't go purposely getting one of these to use just because y'all know how I am. I like that spicy, spicy stuff stuff so this right here is just lacking on the energy for what i feel comfortable with but let me know down in the comments what y'all think about it do any y'all out there carry either one of these rounds the hst or the punch have you tested them yourself in any kind of way what do you run them out of and have you had any trouble with it let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are if you did enjoy the video take a second if you would and hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel and make sure you've got those notifications turned on so hopefully you get notified when i upload stuff Take a second, like I always ask, and check out those affiliate links in the video description. Anything you pick up after hitting those links, I get a kickback from them towards the channel, so I really appreciate that. Again, a big thanks to all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all for supporting the channel. I've got one more test planned for out here today and plenty more stuff on the way, so stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.